Hello and welcome or welcome back everyone. How are you doing? In today's video, I'm bringing you this absolutely fantastic 1987 jigsaw puzzle by Waddington's containing 1500 pieces. And this, by the way, is a 19th century painting by Louise Reyna depicting High Street, Chester in the UK. <laughs> And as usual, I will give you tons of very useful tips and tricks on how to tackle puzzles like this. And as I know, this is going to be a very challenging puzzle. I'm going to stick with the traditional way. I'm going to be framing it first, which is not going to be easy. And then I will work on the liminal spaces. You know, that place between the buildings and the sky. And then obviously all of that sky. But now let's check the overall quality and the shapes available. Now, just by opening the box, I already know this is going to be a super high quality, very, very beautiful puzzle. As you can see here, there's quite a few variations in the shapes, but it's definitely not one of those crazy shapes puzzles. This is what we are dealing with here. And in case anyone out there is wondering, yes, this is a cardboard puzzle and it is 1.2 millimeters thick. And also most of the pieces will measure around 30 millimeters. Another thing that is worth mentioning is that I came across parts of this puzzle that have those pieces. They appear to form or cut a blank space in half and also confuse me a little bit because they look like parts of the frame. Now, because this puzzle is a little bit bigger than my previous puzzles that I have presented to you or here on the channel, I will end up with a lot more trace. So in this video, I will be focusing only on framing and also on the white parts, the sky. So I ended up with two trays full of white pieces. As you can see here, there's some light blue ones, which hopefully will help me a lot with the sky. And then obviously all of the framing, which by the way, is occupying a full tray, a full, very large tray. And with that in mind, let's tackle the frame first. Let's do it. And just like some of my previous puzzles, I would like to start this one with the painter's signature. In this case, Louise Reyna, a very prolific city landscape painter from the 19th century. And yes, her name is mysteriously misspelled on the box of this uh, Waddington's jigsaw puzzle. So if you know what happened, please let me know. But now back to the puzzle. Here is the left side of it and i can tell it because of all of the uh, you know the, the the very clear imagery that's there but now things start started to get a little bit more complicated as i was uh, venturing into the whiter or the pale white parts of the puzzle that had little to no information but hey don't worry i'm not going to be rushing through the whiter parts in this uh, part one of this puzzle we're going to talk in details on how you can actually tackle pieces that have little information apart from the shape. So if your puzzles have a little bit of variation on the shape, let me show you in just a minute what you can do to master those pieces and have no fear. Sadly, there were pieces that needed some mending. So I had a uh, white glue, a uh, paper glue uh, ready for um you know necessary uh, fixings like this one here so i came across several pieces that were kind of the picture was falling from it but here we go i finished the framing so this is complete now and out of the way and it took me about an hour to complete the frame by the way if you are still watching this video, I'm guessing you are waiting for the tips and tricks that I have to give you, particularly to those who are starting with jigsaw puzzles. 
and are looking at pieces and thinking, well, they all look the same. How the heck am I going to do this? So in this case here, for example, I found a really clear clue, which was part of that, you know, the left, top left uh, painting. So that was easy. However, not all the pieces are that straightforward. Like, as you can see here, I'm totally struggling with those pieces. And when that happens, what I normally do is I go around them. After a while, I just give up and go around them. Start building around that missing piece. At the same time that you are also looking at variations in the pieces. Like, for example, here, this, the top and bottom tabs are very asymmetrical. So I went through all the asymmetrical pieces and I eventually came across the right one. But again, sometimes you may have to try multiple times before you find the right piece. Now, another thing that is worth mentioning to all the newcomers to Jigsaw Puzzles is I talk a lot about angel wings. Here, for example, I'm looking for the, the you know, the right wings that are pretty straight vertically, and I just found it. Now, this one here, the next one right next to it is slightly leaning to the left. And now, as a surprise, as just as a change, I came across two pieces that look identical but lucky me the pieces can only fit in one particular place and after many and many hours of struggling with the white pieces of the sky I decided to tackle this puzzle from another angle what I'm working on right now is those liminal spaces or the liminal pieces in this case, where the sky meets the beginning of the buildings or the beginning of other objects. You see, I'm really enjoying this puzzle, even though it's taking me like forever to complete it. Right now, I'm working on the depiction of the Chester Town Hall, which was built in 1869. Which, by the way, is also located only a few meters away from St. Peter's Cathedral. A building that's even older at around 907 when the Romans were the main power in England. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a, a very slight variation and change of colors, like a gradient from a light purple to like that grayish color of the sky. And I really enjoy that. Now again, I'm looking for the ET head here, which we have talked about before. And now the one next to it, as you can see, the left wing is really long, elongated. So for me to go through my trays and look for that piece was actually very straightforward. So I highly recommend you try organizing your trays in a way in which you can spot the pieces very easily. And here we are, bingo. Now, here is a piece that is going to be very difficult to uh, be missed. So all I need to do is to go through my trays and see if I can spot that piece with a very elongated top part of it. Or depending on the angle you look at it, it is going to be the right wing. But anyway, as you can see here, this part also has the left side is really high if you're looking from that angle. This one has a really obvious inclination uh, on one side. So finding that specific piece in a well-organized tray is not difficult. So if you guys are solving a puzzle from piles of pieces, uh, it could be a little bit tricky. So I could not recommend trays more than what I already recommend. Get a tray. It doesn't matter what it looks like and make sure it is well organized. Well, I think I've mentioned this trick before, which is actually one of my own inventions. So if you use it on your channel, if you're also a puzzler, please make sure you mention where you got this idea from. In this one, I create what I call an inverse cutout paper. And this is literally just a paper with a hole in the middle. And that will help me or it will replace the need to use a finger 
around the area where you are working, particularly on pieces, you know, on parts that are extremely tricky and all the pieces look the same. It's easy to get overwhelmed. So what I do is I lay that paper and I work on specific parts of puzzles without any distractions. And after a few weeks working on this part of the puzzle, I finally finished it. And this is the final result. So guys, I'm going to leave you for now and I'm going to be back in a couple of days with part number two. We will talk about very exciting and very interesting upgrades to your possible trace. I'm going to talk about the good, bad and the ugly side of having fabrics on your trace. And also, we're going to talk about many more tricks to solving puzzles like this. So I'll see you next time.